Okay, I'd like to go over a situation that you'll likely find in your homework assignment for Thursday um, about simple energy conservation but in a, a context that, that may look a little bit different. Um, I started working on this a little bit the other day in class but we kind of ran out of time so I wanted to cover it here briefly. Um, it involves a, uh, a ball swinging like a pendulum. So the, um, sorry about the cough there, so it shows a, a ball that's on a string of length L. Um, there's some tension force, of course, that the string or the rope is exerting on the ball. And there's also a force due to gravity, which is pushing down. Um, and if we want to be able to say something about the speed of this ball when it's at the lowest point, um, it's it's a very difficult question. So we might want to know what is the speed or the velocity of this ball at the lowest point. Um, the problem we run into if we try to solve this problem using Newton's laws is that um, Newton's laws uh, are, we'd have to write a Newton's law for every position of this ball along the, uh, the path because the, the direction of the tension force is constantly changing as it moves from its high point here down to its low point um, here in the middle. And so it's extremely complicated to try to solve from a Newton's for news, using Newton's second law. Um, uh, but what we can do is say something about the um, the energy in this particular situation, right? We um, we have uh, the only force we have a tension force here, um, and we we might need to be concerned about the work that that force does. So so the net so the sorry the work done by the the string is going to be equal to the force by the string uh, the scalar product of the force of the string times the uh, displacement um, of the ball in the direction of the force on the string right that's kind of our general expression for what the work is um, so what would that be well um, we would need the force by the string is always um, kind of radially towards this this point of motion, the point about which this is moving. Um, and we can ask ourselves, well, is there any displacement in that direction? Well, the length of the string stays the same the entire time, so at, at, and the, the velocity is always actually tangent to that point. Um, by definition, right, this tension is providing the centripetal acceleration. Um, so there is no displacement in the direction of the tension force. Um, and so the scalar product of these two, even though there is some displacement and there is some, um, there is definitely some force by the tension, um, the, the dot product, or sorry, the scalar product of these two quantities uh, is going to be equal to zero because they're always, the, not the, the magnitudes of these things are different, but the, um, the direction is, right? If we wrote this out with, in terms of our cosine, so the force of the string, the magnitude of the force of the string, that is some non-zero quantity. The displacement, that is definitely some non-zero quantity. But cosine of theta, well, what's theta? The displacement is always, for any instant, is immediately, um, is always going to be perpendicular to the direction of that force. So the angle here is pi over 2, and 90 degrees, right? And so cosine of pi over 2 is going to be equal to 0. So this whole thing equals 0. So the work by the string is going to be equal to 0. Right. So then, uh, what what are the other forces that we have? Well, we have um, a gravitational force acting on this, and um, and that's it. Right. Just a gravitational force. So um, if we, that's a conservative force. So we know that our uh, mechanical energy is going to be conserved. So delta, the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy is going to be equal to zero. I think a lot of times in class I I wrote these in the opposite order, but it doesn't matter which order you write them in. 
you're just adding so you can add them in either order um, so that would be the final uh, potential energy minus the initial potential energy plus the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy and that's equal to zero right well what's the finest final potential energy when it's at this very bottom well that's the lowest most point now we can write our final potential energy um, on whatever position that we would like <coughs> Right, so we could we could write the potential final potential energy to be some about you know relative to some point far below here, or we could also we could simply choose our final potential energy to be equal to <clears throat> this point right here. Right, we simply say that um, well our final potential energy is going to be equal to zero <coughs> minus some initial potential energy, um, and what is that going to be? Actually, I shouldn't write you here. I should actually try to fill these things in a little bit. So. Um, we need to know what this distance is, right? The height of this. What is this value? Um, let's call that. <clears throat> let's call that h. But we want to say <coughs> we want to relate h to something that we know something about. Well, we know here that this um, this ball is at some displacement l, um, and presumably at some angle. Right, maybe some initial angle here that we know. Um, let's call that just theta. Right, it has some angle. Um, well, the length of the string here as well is also l. Right, but it's different. The difference between the, um, these the two positions of this ball is based off of uh, the difference here. Right, you can see that here the um, there's a, the hypotenuse for this triangle here that we can draw. Um, is L and at some angle theta and if we can figure out what the um, so this is also L if we can figure out what the vertical component of this right triangle is and the difference between L and this component of the the position of the ball the difference between those will give us that height for the potential energy Right? And that's basically where the, the fun mathematical trick of this problem lies. Um, so what would that be? Well, that would be um, here we would have um, the potential energy at this point would be 0. And then at this point, what, what's the value here? That h is going to be equal to um, whatever the, let's see, that is... We want L minus this is the this value here, so we want L minus this little chunk right here, and that's L cosine of theta. Right? The little vertical component of that would be cosine of the angle theta times the hypotenuse L. Right? So that's what our H is going to be. So when we go to plug this in, our final potential energy is zero, and our initial potential energy is mg times that value of h, right? Just mgh, and that value of h for this problem is L minus L cosine of theta. Plus the final kinetic energy, which is 1 half mvf squared, minus the initial kinetic energy, which is 0. And that equals 0. So now we can simply solve this expression for vf, right? And we're finished. Um, it, it doesn't need to be exactly what this value is at the very bottom. We could define, again, a any point along um, this path and so long as we knew something about maybe the angle at which maybe we want to know well what about at half the angle when the angle is half as much as this um, what would the velocity be then well then we simply have a situation where um, we still have no initial kinetic energy but now we have a final potential energy that's based off the position um, when it's at this midway point and that would give us a different final velocity the velocity at this midway point or something like that so it's an extremely powerful tool that gives us a lot of information um, in even in situations where we you know we might otherwise not be able to do it so this is the exact same type of um, solution method as many of our our the other problems that we kind of did in class the only one that the only reason that this is a bit different is because of the geometry of the situation and figuring out what this value of h is okay so i hope that's clear as to why this is not any different than those other ones it just involves a little bit different geometry